Right. <clears throat> We've got this one running. Let me go get the other camera. Move you around. And there we go. We can see Mars over here now. Alright, so there we go. There's the moon over in the trees. In the east. And there we go with Mars pretty high up in the southeast. But we're going to start off with, with these two guys. Well, finally, <laughs> we've been shut out for a good two weeks now. Our skies have been really bad here. Day after day after week. <laughs> and I may put a few pictures in here just to show. But if not, well, hello there. Here we finally are on a Saturday, November 28th, 2020 at 5.41 p.m. up here in Northeastern Ohio. And over here in the southwest sky we have Jupiter and Saturn. As Saturn is inching closer and closer. And in about three weeks time on December 21st, both Jupiter and Saturn are going to be lined up and then after that, Saturn is going to be off to the right, rising and setting before Jupiter. It's so cool to see this transpire. I've been filming, um, I've been filming these guys for many years now. Back in 2017, I don't have very many good shots because they were too, they were spread too far apart then, so I couldn't get them in, in the uh, same frame. But then in 2018, we got a little bit closer. Then as we got to 2019, Saturn was closing the gap. But then this year, hmm, it's pretty spectacular to watch. Anyway, before Jupiter gets too low, I don't think we're going to be able to get it very good. Because it's about 20 degrees above the horizon, so there's going to be so much atmosphere to cut through. But... Oh, wow, that's pretty terrible. That's all right, though. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. I'm not going to bother to get a video clip because it's not going to come out. We can see the bands every so often, <laughs> but there's just way too much atmosphere. All right, so we're not spending a lot of time there, but let's head over to Saturn. It might come in a hair better. Maybe not. <laughs> it's only up about one or two degrees uh, higher. Yeah, there we go. It is coming in a tad better. <laughs> not much. Yeah, it's still amazing to be able to get these guys. Even though they're not going to come in that great. But it's the end of November and nearly December, and they still haven't dipped down below the houses and trees yet, after the sun's gone down. I think last year I lost sight of Jupiter around September sometime, and then I lost sight of uh, Saturn in October, something like that. But anyway, okay, that's a good enough look there. Oh, and by the way, we are filming the zoomed-in portion with the Canon R camera and the RF 800 lens and the 2X extenders on there. We're recording into the Atomos Ninja Flame, the 7-inch uh, monitor recorder. Okay, now let's change things around. Okay, there we go with Mars. 
Hmm. It's not as good as it was during the summer, but it was a lot closer to us then, too. Yeah, now, Mars is higher up in the sky. It's up about 34 degrees above the horizon, so... There's not near as much atmosphere to cut through like there is for Jupiter and Saturn, but... The planet is much smaller than the other two, and... It's getting further and further away. In the summer, we got some pretty good shots of it when it was closer to us. But I think we might be able to see a dust band there. It's so hard to tell out here on the smaller monitor, but we'll find out when we go in. Let's see, it's now 6 p.m. Since our clear sky conditions are going to be short-lived, I may have to come back out to uh, try to get Orion. Sirius will probably be too low, but... Uh, they might be over here in the southwest or southeast sky about 11 p.m. tonight. If the clouds hold off. Anyway, but while we're out here, we'll get our fourth one, which is the moon. It's about 98% lit, but I'm going to have to move all this gear again. I'll be right back. Oh, boy. All right, we got everything all situated now. And we can't get the moon and Mars in the same frame, so down over in the eastern sky, we have the 98% moon. So we're back over to the zoom footage. Let me see, we're at 400 ISO, 160th. It's probably too bright, but and as we can see, the moon is still pretty low, so... As I'm constantly saying, we're cutting through a lot of atmosphere. <laughs> but we'll stroll around at the 5X and see what's shaking up there. It's hard to see much of anything, of the features, of the depth of the craters and all that, when it's almost full, but... We're in the area that I quite enjoy. The question mark, the mesa, the lake beam area, and even the numbers and letters over there. <laughs> Actually, they're coming in pretty well for the moon being so low. It might be up about, oh, 15 degrees above the horizon now. And the moon is uh, moving out of frame because I don't have the greatest alignments here. I'm not very level, as usual. That's what happens when you keep needing to move the tripod and doing one quick alignment after another. But anyway, if I get this handset to work, it doesn't like the work in the uh, speed range of 1 to 5 or one to four, which is a shame because that is a nice rate. The others are just too quick. All right, anyway, that's a pretty good shot there. I'm quite happy with that. And like I said, I would like to come back out in a few hours because I do miss uh, Orion and the Orion Nebula, Betelgeuse, and all those. Sirius, too. Like I said, though, I think Sirius will probably be stuck in the trees around that time. <laughs> Alrighty, so that should do it there for all four of them. So for folks over here in the U.S., I hope you're having a nice holiday weekend, and... For everyone else, I hope you're having a safe and enjoyable one, too. All right, y'all take care. It's now 6.11 p.m. up here. Bye now. All right, there we go. Oh, it's about time I shut all these off, huh?
It's now 6.16 p.m.